and boom welcome back everybody to the omniverse comics guide podcast we are your omniverse comics guide guys uh i'm eric i'm also a guy thank you for joining us (laughs) yes you are you're also a guy i just checked uh thank you for joining us (laughs) yep still still intact well thank you for joining us live on twitch um if you're tuning in on youtube after the fact thank you so much for tuning in and and joining us there and if you're on any podcast platform listening to your commute to or from work or however you enjoy listening to the podcast thank you press the like and subscribe button that you see on your screen it helps us get the word out and share the episode that's even better because it helps us make better stuff yeah for the listeners my boy dave <laughs> is always working on the omniverse comics dot guide you got to check out the omniverse comics dot guide because it is quickly becoming the best comic book resource <gasps> actually on the on the yeah on the web Why just gets better you? and better yes so it deserves it deserves the credit deserves the shout out that i'm famous for shout out everybody shout out <laughs> mother flippers yeah all right it's that time of the month for us <laughs> incoming <laughs> oh that time of the month <laughs> i just re- yeah that time of the month for us <laughs> It's the incoming comics, collected editions, whatever it is that you <laughs> want to unwrap or give this to somebody. This is a dangerous the next metaphor. Month. Yeah. I'm working with it. I'm working with well, it good. on purpose. Good, good, so you good. Know. <laughs> Doing good, right? Not scared at all. <laughs> yes. If you've been if you've been tuning into the podcast for the last year, it's almost a full year, Dave. Mm. Uh, we do this every month to talk about books that we're looking forward to being re-released released for the first time things that we've purchased that we want to recommend to people so come window shop with us dave window shop. oh i think coming collected edition you're first this week dude i believe is it my turn it's All your right. turn how did you find how did you find this uh these choices for the month i'm not gonna lie this was a weird month we, we had a lot of weird months and then they pushed everything into november and i was looking at today and where we kind of have we try and avoid volume twos and volume threes and so on and so forth it's, it's, it's tricky <laughs> this is a tricky month yeah you found that yeah did you it i i had i have picks some pretty obvious and uh maybe some maybe some ones that escaped you i don't know oh, I, I came up with 10 what <laughs> i don't know if you had as much yeah no not that i'm gonna buy everything but yeah, I think there's there's a couple of things that piqued my interest that maybe weren't on my radar, things that I might have read, like I said before. Yeah. So I begin. Okay. Yeah, shoot. Let me go with something that I'm going to actually be buying okay. to start, and that's Batman Eternal. This is a, a re-release of the weekly series that was coming out, I think, in 2014 2015 in and around that time only because that's when i got back into comics pretty heavily 2012 even and it's uh written by a cast of writers you've got scott snyder who's top billing because he was the batman writer of the time james tinian if i'm not mistaken was also involved in the writing of this book ray yes. fox uh... books some issues as well, you've got artwork. I remember very famously the Jason Fabok art in the first ish, couple of issues. Anywho, this omnibus, I've, I've collected it in single format. I had it on my pull list back when it was coming out, and I think I read halfway through, and I kind of couldn't keep up anymore, not realizing that I've never read a weekly comic series like this as it was coming out, and I'm thinking it's going to be the main batman book not realizing it's going to go off and veer into these other characters to you know in order to tell a story like this yeah. you gotta go into the other parts of gotham it's the only way you could pull it off so i've never completed the story and i've heard very positive things from people who of that time were reading batman because it was a pretty solid time you had snyder and as well as uh, tomasi on the main titles and then here you got a whole host of stars, right? So yeah. this is what I've ordered for December. It's the only oh, thing I've pre-ordered. It's good. It's so I'm good, looking man. forward to it. And I think it's going to be a good good read for that time of year, right? You just yeah. go by the fireplace, get into Gotham, blanket <laughs> around you. Set nice, on fire. Whatever you prefer to drink. <laughs> that's right. That's right. 
So that's my first pick. Have you finished that? You have this omnibus, right? I've read it, yeah. And I got the omnibus afterwards. So I liked it enough to, to buy it. Um, I am going to reread it because there are some bits that spin off. So they're, they're optional. So it does veer into Catwoman mm. series and it veers into a mini series called yeah. Arkham Manor as well. And a couple of other little bits. So, and there's one issue of Batman. So, yeah, it does. It's, it's not technically a crossover, but it's like, um, you know, it does impact titles as it ran for the full year. But I need to read it again because I can't 100% remember in what way it kind of crosses over. Mm. But you don't need to read all that. You really don't need to. I mean, I don't think Arkham Man is particularly good. But if you did want to kind of look into that you- side of it, it, it just takes you out of the story for a bit. Right. And I feel that's kind of what I don't remember reading those crossovers, but I felt like I got to a point in the story where I was kind of taken out of it because I felt like I was missing a piece or something. Just kind of felt like that. Like, where did this story go? And from what I remember, what it is, is that uh, Commissioner Gordon has been framed of something that you really think it's going to stick. Whatever has happened to him, it's you don't see a way out of it. Uh-huh. And how does everybody put their minds together to one, prove his innocence or to get him out of the situation he's in. That's what I remember the premise being, which is pretty, it's quick to invest in that. I just realized I don't but remember I don't what it's remember about. It. <laughs> I just went, you're going, is that what it's about? <laughs> I couldn't remember at all. That's what it's I remember. So it's been like 10 years since. Yeah. I remember, it's yeah, exactly. So I'm excited that it's re-released. I'm going to give it a shot. I love Batman. So, yeah. And, and, Again, this is a cover to cover story. You're not going to have to get a volume two when it's just you can read this. It's a complete story. You get all the characters in it. And I think Batman and Robin Eternal are kind of its sequel. Yeah. But not necessarily necessary. Half as long and not as strong. Yeah. There you go. So that's, that's what they say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I heard that rumor. You take it away, sir. <laughs> Thanks, dude. That's a good shout. I didn't I didn't spot that somehow. I'm going to start with something a little small and manageable. You know, that's uh, the way some people like it. It's the Great British Bump Off. That's all you need. That's all you need, just as long as you can feel it. It's a Great British Bump Off, which is from Dark Horse Comics. It's by John Allison, but it's a four-issue miniseries. It's a reference to the TV show, The Great British Bake Off, uh, The Great British Bake Off, but it's... Uh, they've turned it into a murder mystery. So while it's a baking competition, it's also a Angela Lansbury style <laughs> murder mystery. Someone at work was mentioning uh, the British Bake Off show and how good of a show it is. So really? it's so funny that you bring up. Yeah. He's like, oh, it's so good. You don't got to watch any season in order. You just watch. And I'm like, a Bake Off show. It's like a baking competition. Oh, it's so good. I'm like, all right. I wasn't expecting that, but cool. But continue with your uh <laughs> Misha watches your pick, it. I, I don't watch I don't really watch TV, but she watches like Master Chef and all this stuff, and it's all like cooking competitions and stuff, and people love it. Uh it's very yeah. popular over here. But apparently they, they show it in America, Even here. but they rebrand it because they're not allowed to call it bake off in America. So they have to actually go in and on the award they have to kind of edit it out and rename the award oh like for, with special effects. So it still looks genuine. Rather just cut that bit out. The Great British Bump Off is a is a trade paperback, so standard size as far as I'm aware. Four issues, 112 pages. It's something a little bit different. I thought they were going to run with the variant cover for the collected edition. I mean, the the cover is lovely. I love that artwork. But the variant cover was by Dan Hip, who does a lot of the art and character design stuff for Teen Titans Go. Uh, and it just, I just love that cover design but it just looks like a really fun book and it's going to be very tongue-in-cheek and funny so well up for that it's by the creator of giant days i've never read giant days but also they're re-releasing giant days in a special format at the moment so if you're into you're into john allison this is a good time to be a fan so plenty of stuff coming out nice wasn't on my i didn't that wasn't on my radar but you always are uh good for coming through with those type of Random you didn't know shit. this was a thing. <laughs> no, it's good though because a lot of the stuff you recommend, I end up picking up, and it's when you give it a five star review or you really highly recommend it. It usually is. It's a good. It's good for a reason. You give it that review for a reason. Cheers, dude. All right. Should I move on to number Go two, or it. is there anything that we're show us your number two? Okay. 
So this, I would probably pick this up if I, I didn't see exactly what was collected. So we could probably talk about that now. But it's uh, the Spider-Man omnibus from Chip Zdarsky. And I don't know if you read his Peter Parker at all. The, the series. It wasn't a, a extensively long run, maybe like 20 issues or so. But it was really good Spider-Man stuff. And I also enjoyed his uh, Spider-Man life story with oh, did. Mark Bagley. I love Mark Bagley on Spider-Man. Yeah. I did. Did you read that by chance? Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't see the, the uh, hype at all. I, I'm thinking, no, Chip Zdarsky I, stuff is nice, but I'm yet to read anything of his that's made me swoon. Like it's okay. Got you. I haven't read a ton of his things, but the things that I've come across, I've enjoyed. I haven't read anything from him that I didn't like, even if it's a image title like something that's off I, I never read sex criminals but the things that i've read like his marvel two and one that was with oh, a, the that. thing in giant yeah. storm it was i i had a ton of fun reading his stuff i've enjoyed quite a bit of what i read from him so this collects spectacular spider-man one to six from 2007 297 when they renumbered it to 310 ah uh, right and then spectacular spider-man annual Life Story 1 to 6, and Spider-Man, Sh Spider Shadow 1 to 5. So it's almost a 1,000 pages worth. A, a decent omnibus to collecting somebody's work on the character. Well, that's the thing. I didn't and realize he'd written... And there's certain moments. Sorry, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I, sorry, guys, I didn't go realize ahead. he'd written that much Spider-Man, but clearly there's more than I realized. Yeah, and when there's... He did an issue in that run on Peter Parker Spectacular that will always come to my head when I think of a really great Spider-Man moment f for me. Yeah. And it's like those convert. I don't know if you've read it, but yeah. it was Matt Walsh was on the art and it's just the conversation. Yes. Like the one with Aunt May, this is one that you've always wanted to see what would happen if, and I, and I have a, because of stuff that I remember him pulling off that way, I, I always have that sort of soft spot for for Chip Zdarsky, and he's a local, a local superstar. So shout out to Toronto <laughs> and Chip Zdarsky. Oh man, I think yeah, it, I love Spider Man. It, that's just it. I think that I did hover on that one just because I remembered that issue because you recommended it to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I just I want to go back and give it another go, but I'll probably go digital because I'm. It's Christmas, man. <laughs> Got to buy stuff. Yeah, for kids why not? <laughs> hey, kids, you want a Chips and Dusky <laughs> Spider Man omnibus? Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, you let's do. read it together. You're six. <laughs> You'd love it. <laughs> I, you know, his life story. It wasn't groundbreaking, but what I what I thought was cool about it was the way that he was able to condense the Spider Man history that we're all kind of. Some stuff we love, some stuff we want to wish never happened. But he found a way to condense Peter's life into those six issues and make everything count, which I feel can be a tough trick to pull off. Mm. But it's not, there isn't anything there that necessary. It's more like a love letter to Spider-Man. So I never, I never went into that expecting it to be groundbreaking, but more of like, hey, that was pretty cool that you were able to give us this sort of photo album of a, a character that we all love in in i don't know you you pay homage in, in a nice way yeah that's how i kind of take that book. yeah that's cool it's, it's a yeah a comfort read but yeah chip sudarsky spider-man omnibus very cool that they're doing that i'm down for the nice. right price i'm down yeah well yeah for the right price come on marvel bring those prices down yeah come on <laughs> come on all right all righty so my number two <laughs> is Rat Queen's Omnibus from Image. Now, Rat Queen's is a, it's a fantasy series and it was a, came out around about a time when I was kind of experimenting a bit with fantasy stuff and I, I think there was a trend in fantasy to move away from people trying to sound like Thor. Every character sounded mm. randomly English and it was always the same mm. kind of stories. Whereas Rat Queen's is a little bit different. It feels a bit more modern. You know, they've got sending stones at like telephone so it's kind of got like a um more of a modern take on all this stuff so it feels familiar and people talk like actual characters and it's a, a female-led cast it's by now i i 
don't actually again know how to pronounce his name. I'm sorry, I should have done the research before. <laughs> Curtis J. Weeb? Vibe? <laughs> I, I'm not 100%. I've, uh, I, I like the way I like Weeb. I like that. that, that we'll go with that. <laughs> Weeb? Curtis That's, J. Weeb? He's Curtis J. Weeb every time now that he gets a mention. Every time. So this thing is um, it's 100, sorry, 1,224 pages. And I believe oversized hardcover. So it's nice and beefy. Plus, it collects doo -ba -doo 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 -doo. Rat Queens Volume 1, 1 to 15. Rat Queens Volume 2, 1 to 25. Um, issue 16, actually, as well, of Volume 1, which they haven't reprinted before. And I don't really know what they haven't put in a collected edition before. Then there's a load of one shots, which includes Sisters, Warriors. I think they haven't mentioned Rat Queens, Dave, number one. But, you know, that's got to be in there, right? Come on, got to be loyal to your Daves. But it's, in theory, it's the whole run in one book. And it's a fun series, man. And it's good to have female-led stuff. The, the front cover's a bit more suggestive than I remember it ever any of the other covers being. <laughs> but Misha's read it and really loved it. I got to check out this cover. Because <laughs> I'll admit, I've seen, I've seen the Rat Queen's books and stores but i've it was never on my radar to read so the sass and sorcery no that's not it rat queen's omnibus yeah, yeah. you're right it does it looks a lot more sexualized choice. than um than it normally yeah. looks. i don't know i don't think it's like that in the book i don't know because i've yeah, read it that... misha's read it i haven't but i'm now i'm curious to read it because okay. i like that it's in one collector edition but when i saw the cover i, I literally just went like, oh <laughs> i didn't I wasn't expecting as that. the series as the series collection goes on, like by volume three, there are some um shots where it's becoming a little more suggestive. Oh. As the uh, like the trades were yeah. coming out, but not to not not really to the point of this one. Like this one is it doesn't look like the other covers what the what it's suggesting the story is about. This one is looking like, hey, there's options. Pick your tab <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah, it does a bit. Right? Yeah. It kind of does look like that. It does. So I it's it's a strange choice based on what you're describing. But yeah, it sounds like fun. I believe it is quite a fun series. Like a there were some issues with the artist on the first run. I believe he uh, ended up um having some legal problems. So he was taken off the book and then they relaunched with a new number one. But it's good that they've actually finally finished collecting that first series and they give you the second series and it's all together. So, I mean, there's hope for stuff like Rumble as well. This is what I like about seeing these compendiums and and like the omnibus approach. That it's This is a Rat Queen's omnibus. This is not something they normally use title-wise for Image. So it seems that they're going, you right. know, we want a piece of that action and why not? Yeah. That would really change my collecting it would be a it would be a good thing and a problem <laughs> because there's a lot of stuff that i would probably buy from image and omnibus form immediately like revival for instance yeah i'd get that immediately oh, just yeah. based on how good things are recommended to you right so yeah i don't know why they haven't done that a little bit more i think they didn't they didn't they do it with invincible because, i think they've done that in omnibus format yeah they yeah, they've put it out in hardcover. It's pretty nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they've done library as well. But, it's like... Yeah, those compendium. Yeah, they're starting to... You're right, though. It's it's that thing of getting into the market that you realize people... There is a whole niche market of collectors who want this format of books. Or they're waiting. They're almost waiting. They're going to buy it if you put it out there. Yeah. But it's yeah, it's a tough game to play. Yeah, well, hopefully this will make people jump I, on and give give stuff like this a try. Yeah, why not? For the right price. Mm -hmm. For the All right price. Look... You hearing Marvel? Yeah. All right. I like. <laughs> I'm gonna go for my third before the break. Okay. <laughs> before the break, one of my often referred to writers, Kurt Busick. Oh. He's got a book with mm -hmm. Brent Eric Anderson. Yeah. His team from Astro City, The Gods on Sunday Morning, a graphic novel. 152 pages, image comics. It sounds kind of like what you get with American Gods, but again, I haven't read this to, to know and I haven't finished American Gods either to, to have a real opinion. 
but the review of the book overview is immortality isn't all it's cracked up to be meet manny an ancient near forgotten god living in a crummy motel in la it's not much of a life for him or the other forgotten gods he meets for breakfast every sunday but something's brewing something that will change the god's destiny forever or end it kurt Busick, brent anderson yeah i'll check that out i'll probably like it yeah hopefully but it's the kind of comic i would buy so that's a blind buy for me uh when i see it again in the comic book shop or on on a website i won't mention any because we're you know not trying to support the big corporations yeah, but screw those guys yeah I'll, I'll, ch I'll check this out i actually I had it on pre-order i'm happy you still make the comics and you had to make the decision the tough call of what was gonna yeah yeah it's Christmas, i feel that the, the reason also i wanted to recommend hey kids, yeah no I do you want it. the gods I on sunday morning by kurt booty <laughs> you're sick uh, yeah we could talk about <laughs> it on christmas daddy what's this well we're talking <laughs> it is christmas Let's the talk tears about as the they open up all these, <laughs> these books <laughs> but i wanted the lol oh, camper daddy. van <laughs> no you didn't <laughs> Yeah, see, the, the thing that I thought, too, with something like this is that um, you could just pick this up and read it. You're not going to be beholden to sticking around. But it may yeah. trigger you to check out Astro City. And from there, you're down a whole other rabbit hole of comic book reading. Yeah. So, yeah, I thought, why not? Why not give this one a, a whirl? Yeah, that's a good shout. That's a this good shout. I, I had a feeling you'd mention it. I'm glad you did. It's good to have some yeah. different stuff. I, there's a couple there. here. Yeah, there's a couple here that I thought you were going to definitely mention. So I said, let me take this one. Because he's probably <laughs> leaving it for me to as a lob, like a volley. So, yeah. We do have the Kickstarter Spotlight. That is the early November Spotlight. So there's a load of stuff on there that you can look at, including Adam Polina's Icon project, which has creators like Tom DeFalco, from friends is on it there's loads of big name creators that you'll know you'll recognize in the 90s that is one fine looking book but there's matt wagner project with uh, dracula in there as well with kelly jones there's a whole bunch of really interesting projects also mm. the big event for this month that's been added is forever evil it is a big event overview it's the whole event in order including so you get your, your core list of everything the stuff that you should read for it to make sense the stuff you cannot you don't have to read but it's there and it shows where it's in order and then there's the full synopsis and breakdown of synopsis with all the page breaks and stuff so you can see how it all fits together and then because there are sub crossovers for it they're listed as separate things so you only want to read arkham war it shows you the issues you need to understand arkham war and again with you need this you don't need this so and then there's massive fallout nice very well done thank you omniverse comics guide like we said reading orders reviews Podcast videos, Dave's always Duff. throwing something up there. Thank you. Baby monkey. Baby monkey. My number three is Marvel Universe by Arthur Adams Omnibus. I thought you might mention one of these. I had to mention it. Well, the, the thing the thing with this one is, I'm going to caveat this. I, normally, the stuff I mention, I am picking up, or I've already got it. On this occasion, I'm not getting it. Because a lot of the stuff that's in there, you may already own. If you, if you, it's it's got like a long shot one to six, which is just in Uncanny X Men Omnibus Volume Five, and another one that's due out. New Mutant Special Edition Number One, Uncanny X Men Annual Nine and Ten, Cloak and Dagger Number Nine, which I totally forgot he drew. X Factor Forty One and Forty Two, which were my first X Factor issues ever. So I've got a soft spot for those issues. They come to England and there's a mutant who can turn things into gold and these trolls are chasing him. And like, why is it always trolls and mysticism in England? We've got none of that shit here. <laughs> we got none of that shit here. There's the Excalibur Mojo Mayhem one shot. Fantastic Four 347 to 349, which is the new Fantastic Four story with Spider-Man, Wolverine, Hulk, uh, Ghost Rider in the FF mm -hmm. as the FF. X-Men Annual number 12. That. Is that, I think that is the Evolutionary War chapter, but that stands alone mm. as well. So it all largely stands alone. So you'll get some really great stories. It's almost like a little anthology book, but I yeah. own a lot of these stories already. So I'm personally not going to get it. But if you're a fan of Arthur Adams, and I know I am, then this this is a great book to pick up. Like 
he's probably my one of my top two favorite artists of all time in comics really i love i love arthur wow. adams yeah i'm always debating between him i think and, and alan davis and i can never decide I know Alan Davis is is very close to your heart. I, do, I and I knew you were a big fan of Arthur Adams. I didn't know he was that highly ranked. That's cool. Mm. Learn something Love new. Him. Nice. Um, what is it? What is it about his style for you that makes you just be so enamored with his illustration? I think like in the days before Jim Lee, you didn't see that level of detail from many artists. I think sometimes right. you get it from Rick Leonardi when he was being inked by Terry Austin. So Terry Austin would put a lot of detail in his inks, whereas a lot of other inkers would take that detail out or maybe maybe it wasn't there to begin with, I don't know. With um, But you can see like those 80s Rick Leonardi comics on Cloak and Dagger, they look very detailed compared to what you normally got because the print, the paper quality was pretty rough. But Arthur Adams, mm. like the amount of work that went in, you can see it. Even as a kid, I could see the work that's gone into this. Like it's so rewarding to look at those pages and look at all those fine little details and the background stuff that he does, and that when he draws Warlock from the New Mutants, and it's like all the that the machine parts from him, it's fascinating to look at. I think when you compared it to as much as I love the Demon Bear stuff and the other bits of Bill Senkovich on New Mutants, you compare that scratchy kind of scary looking Warlock with this hyper detailed machine person this alien creature more scary it's 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 kind of less scary and more lovable and he he should be a lovable character i think um mm -hmm. I, but i mean you, his art is fun so it's like mm -hmm. you didn't really get a huge amount of that it still feels cartoon e <laughs> right like that kind of cartoony like you know it still has that vibe so it's the bigger eyes and the you know um, the more fun looking very iconic style. though yeah yeah very iconic there's like there's a lot of I think Arthur Adams art that are kind of those images that are in our our mental library sometimes where yeah. we've seen that image so much that you kind of that becomes the quintessential way that that character should look even though it's only been drawn one or two times by this artist that way yeah it became such an iconic like the way uh, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, his sort of figures were the stock figures in your mind for DC for a bit. Yeah, yeah. Arthur Adams has that effect. Well, if you Good look pick at the... for for, oh, thanks, Dave. I was, I was the the yeah. only thing that in answer to your question as well that there's one there's one particular image actually, what you said in terms of Alpha X Men and Alpha Flight, there was a trade paperback mm -hmm. of that, and it collected X Men versus Alpha Flight one and two. With, by Paul Smith. And I love Paul Smith, but his art's completely different. And then it was the New Mutant Special yeah. Edition and X-Men Annual 9, I think. And it was a completely different feel. But the front cover to that book, with the big Loki head, and Loki had that look of like the side squares on the side of his head. And that, to me, is Loki. It's exactly like you're saying. you know. But he also drew mm -hmm. Alpha Flight, New Mutants, X-Men. They're all running at you. And it's like, this is just the coolest image ever when I first saw it. And it's like, that's emblazoned on my brain. And I just love his stuff. So, yeah, yeah. If you're an Arthur Adams fan, this is a, this is a must. It's one thousand two hundred pages of Arthur Adams. You can't go wrong. That'd be a Merry Christmas for Dave. Oh, yeah, kids. You know you like Arthur Adams. <laughs> you're six. <laughs> nice, dude. What do I you like got? That. Good pick. Very cool. Thanks, dude. Okay, my number four. I'll go with something that I read this year, actually in hardcover format. I never got. I might. Mm, Oh, man. I'm going to save this. I'm going to save it. I've read it, but I'll save it perhaps for end of the year list. That's why I don't really? want to repeat. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fair. Well, it's up to, yeah, Maybe. Up to you. Right. Up to you. I'm going to go with something that's a blind buy if I, end up do, if I do end up getting it. But it sounds good, and I know that my pal Adam Chapman from Comic Shenanigans Podcast always spoke highly of the cross-gen era of comics. And there's a sigil omnibus coming out. Was that on your list? Did you have that on your no, radar? No, I think I mentioned it at the end of last episode, but I think it's been pushed back, so we haven't talked about it. Okay. So we can talk. Okay. We can Interesting. talk about it. I don't know if this has ever been collected in an omnibus form sigil. It wasn't really going to be on on my list until I read the synopsis about it. 
Barbara Kessel, Kessel, I think that's Carl Kessel's wife. Yeah, I think that could right. be yeah. wrong. Yeah, I think you're right. And it doesn't list an illustrator, just as various. So I, I'm sure someone on the chat knows more than I do, but this is from the cross gen era, it seems like, of of comics. So I'll read the, the description quick. This is what got me. Uh, experience the epic saga of galactic mercenary Sa Saman Dal Rey, fighting to survive amid a brutal war against the Saurans. When Sam suddenly receives the sigil, a mark burned into his chest that grants him access to vast power, but without any instruction or control, it makes him a weapon and a tart. Sam and his crew are traveling through the cosmos, being chased, battling enemies, trying to unravel the mystery of the sigil. It sounds like a prototypical cosmic story. I'm in. I like that stuff. I just been in the Green Lantern Corps for a little bit, a little while, reading that omnibus. You're now a member I'm in now? the War of Kings. <laughs> yeah, I'm a member now. Oh, look, Woo! I'm a member. Prove it to you. Have you got a ring? Careful. You actually have got a ring. <laughs> I got a. I told you I'm a member. <laughs> I can't use it because my neighbors around will know and they'll be onto something. But I'll tell you. you just wear the little mask. You'll be fine. Friends. No one will ever recognize That's next. you. It'll come. <laughs> Only members of the Omnibus Comics Guide know about this. The who? But yes, I love uh, <laughs> I love cosmic stories. This sort of thing is right up my alley, and uh, it's it's a sizable book. Uh, Forty two issues. Crash Gen Chronicles number four, Sauron Unnatural Selection one and two. So yeah, you get a. I, I like when you get a cover to cover series and. You can say, here, read this story. It's a lot of fun. Hopefully, it, it's worth the omnibus treatment. But yeah, it actually piqued my interest as something that I would more than likely buy at some point in time. Maybe not in December, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm going to have my eye on for this, right? No, I yeah, that's my number four. I did. Um, I pre-ordered it blind. Oh, okay. Did yeah. you have you have you read this? No, no you just said blind. No. So like um okay. I remember seeing some of those cross gen books back in the day and there was one particular one I wanted to get. There was one series that was drawn by Jimmy Chung and it was more of a kind of a sword and sorcery type series by the looks of it. But the his art was amazing because before that I'd seen him on Maverick, which was the X Men character, the Wolverine character, and then he jumped on Oh, what was it called? Scion. And it, his art was completely different. And that's kind of more like the art you see now. Way more detailed, way more dramatic. And that's the book I'm hoping to see come out. So this is a really good sign because there were some really, really good sigil books. Jimmy, Who was the artist you were referring to? Jimmy Chung was on Scion. Oh, I love Jimmy Chung. Yeah. Okay. So he was yeah, he was Jimmy at that point. I love He's his Jim stuff. Chung now, isn't he? Of course. Um, but there was also a Mark, a Mark Wade series that looked a bit like... Yeah. A Sherlock Holmes type book, Ruse, I think it was called. Mm -hmm. so yeah, there were a bunch yep. of titles there that that looked really interesting, and I mean, like there were some big name creators working for Cross Gen before it kind of folded. Yeah, I think Kurt Busiek, I think was there too. Mark I, Wade was I, there. Yeah, Wade definitely it's quite was. Ron Mars. I think so. It was a pretty solid, solid team of writers and artists at that time. It's a shame that it it didn't end great, but. Mark Wade, I think, going back to shouting out my boy, Adam, he has actually a conversation with him specifically about the cross-gen ah. stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's it's fitting to to mention it here. But, um, yeah, it's nice to see these things come back around and see the light of day that they deserve, right? Because you hear a lot of people say, you know, I'd love to get my hands on some cross-gen stuff. If you can find it, it's hard to find. It's out of print. So to know that it's going to be on the shelves again. Yeah. Omnified, as we say here. Yep. I'm excited. I'm in. I'm in. It's promising All stuff. All right. You're number four. Take it away. Oh, thanks, dude. Right. My number four tonight is Hairball, which is a Matt Kent. Ah, that was on my list. Was on your list? Nice. That's the, is that the first time we've had, a, had this yeah, on I'm happy you coming mentioned it. for a while? Um, No. Not for, no, we, we usually share. <laughs> So yeah, Hairball is by Matt Kint. It's a, it's I believe, oversized hardcover. So we've been talking recently about some of the gimmick covers we used to get back in the 90s. The gimmick is the thing that sold me on this probably the most. 
So Hairball comes with a slip case, but it's a furry cover because it's about a cat. There's four issues. So it's a brand new Supernatural Nightmare from the eyes of nominated creators of Fear Case and Apache Delivery Service. I still haven't read Apache Delivery Service. Sorry, here's the synop- actual synopsis. A young girl with a black cat yeah. begins to suspect the innocuous beast is behind all her troubles. Her parents fighting, family plagues, and innumerable supernatural horrors. As she tries her best to rid herself of this creature, she discovers that maybe the cat is not evil after all, and a greater terror may be behind these horrific events harming her life. It's by Matt Kent and Tyler Jenkins. So this is going to be pretty art, great writing, and the book just looks really cool because it's it's got a fur cover it's got some die That's... cut for the cat eyes to come through <laughs> i just i'm sold gimmicks man yeah yeah it were they work especially they work. for the collected edition stuff they work for sure and matt kint is pretty solid like you're gonna get something interesting yeah. from matt kint i've never been disappointed thus far i haven't read everything from him but whenever i do I'm genuinely pretty happy with the result yeah. of what I purchased. So highest recommendation for Matt Kent off the strength of his name. If you think you recognize his name, but you're not sure he did. He actually wrote the justice league of America series. I mentioned earlier, which was around, that was the tie in series to the new 52 justice league. He also wrote Exo Manowar, which we speak very highly of. Although I think you've read those issues, haven't you? And I haven't got to that bit yeah. yet, but yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, Exo Manowar, man. it's just, it's great stuff. So he is a fantastic yeah, he writer. He was pretty much. He. I was just going to say we we often speak highly of um, Valiant Comics, Valiant Entertainment. I don't know what they go by, but he pretty much was steering the ship the way Bendis was steering Marvel in the two thousands. Jeff Johns was with DC. He was that at Valiant for a lot of books. Yeah, he dabbled in all of the characters' lives, and it was excellent stuff. In my opinion, I would highly recommend anything for Matt Kinn. He's yeah. got that sort of, yeah, it's, yeah, it's highest tier of writing. At worst, it'll be good. Good pick, At man. best, it'll be great. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's a good way to put it. And it's going to have a cool cover. It's going to have a cool <laughs> cover with cat eye holes. <laughs> right? Can't uh-huh. go wrong. Can't go wrong with that, man. Dude, it's your nice, numero nice five. Oh, thank you. My numero five. All right. I What's it gotta gonna be figure now? out. <laughs> I gotta figure out who which is the publisher, but the title is Pete Townsend's Lifehouse. Pete Townsend from the Who. I think this is what the theme or what the Who's album Who's Next was based off of this storyline. I didn't know that was the case. I'm not a Uber Who fan not to know either. these type of things, but I do like that album if it's the one that I'm thinking about. And it seems like a very fun, psychedelic comic book. 152 pages. It's interpreted or I guess the, what's the word? Adapted by a a few artists and writers. Where is the, everything that's coming up for it now is music from Lifehouse or this book about Lifehouse, but not the book. Ugh. Lifehouse Chronicles? Come on, give me something. However, this looks like a lot of fun. It seems like something that should have been made into a comic to go along with the album. That's always, I think, a a very fun, cool idea to visualize it it at your own speed to go along with the music, if you will. So, yeah, it seems like something a little bit off the beaten path, something unique, worth checking out. I've never read The Fifth Beatle or, or other books that pertain to a band's sort of history but when they're done well or if i don't don't think this is a biography of the who it's it's the theme or the storyline that was built the album so i like that kind of stuff so i'm willing to check it out i'd love to be able to pull it up and and give you more details about it but it seems like i have become an imbecile (laughs) using my (laughs) search engine bit harsh on yourself there dude I'm struggling oh, as well. I, I found it, but it was like it was with a, a um, music like albums attached to it as well. It was part of a big set of stuff that was three hundred dollars. Yeah, is that the one? No, it's not the one. 
it's it's incredible how it's not coming up right now. No worries. Well, you can find it later. It's All right, dude. All right. You're, num you're number five. Okay. I guess we're finishing up on this one. And I yeah. am probably the most excited ever. Mm -hmm. So this is the book I've been looking forward to all year because it was due for release, I think, mm -hmm. over a year ago. And now it's finally mm -hmm. going to be here. I've mentioned it recently, so it's not going to be a major surprise, but it's Kaiju Max Deluxe Edition Volume 3. Oh, that's not what I was expecting. Oh, what were you expecting? But now that you say it, I was expecting Bird King Volume 2. Well, I didn't. Daniel Friedman. I do kind of try and stick to that rule of like not doing Volume 2s and stuff. And the only reason I'm doing Kaiju Max Volume Fair 3 enough. is it Fair ends the, the series. So it's right. the last book in the right. series. And it has been epic, this this book, trying to You've get this book. spoken so highly about it. I love it. This is the first volume. And as you can see, this is the same size Pretty as book. the sixth gun. So these are really, really big. They're, book. they're bigger than absolutes. It's not overly thick, but yeah, it's great. It's just beautiful. A plus, it's got teeth on the page side. Look at them teethies. That's very cool. <laughs> um, Speaking of... Uh, all the graphic design right that goes behind the book production yeah it's just the thought that goes in there i mean i even like the way they do the chapter breaks and stuff you know it's just like it's super simple but it's just nice nice to look at also at yeah. the bottom of the page of every page it's got his footnotes as to what all the, everything's a reference to so you can either read it as you go or save it for later you know and read it again afterwards there's plenty in here plus they give you tons and tons of extras which is all about like you get script stuff you get covers you get character designs you get all sorts of extra bonus stuff in here but the story is the the winner i've mentioned it a thousand times but i mentioned it once more because it's relevant it is basically a prison drama with kaiju so all these kaiju creatures oh, cool. are trapped on an <laughs> island imprisoned on the island and they're not allowed to leave and they're held prisoner but they're by super sentai guards so these giant robot guards operated by humans but all the stuff that you would see in your prison drama TV shows, like the the affairs and stuff, the um, dubious drug it dealing. It seems like such a cute book. That's the thing about it. It's super cute. But, I mean, look at look at the characters. Man. Look <laughs> at them on the back there. This is going to be so cute. It isn't. Yeah. It's not, it is, but it also isn't. Yeah. So it's right. one of those ones that catches you off guard because of the art stuff which is something we've touched on quite a lot lately. It's brilliant. That's the genius behind it. That is the genius behind it. So it's Xander Cannon. He's the writer and artist. It's told with this real... I mean, the, there's such empathy. Like, you really empathise with these characters. And that's the thing about where things have become so literal now, I think, as well, where they're going, you know, unless someone looks and acts like me, I'm not going to be able to relate to these characters. These are kaiju. And I, I worry about the characters when I'm not seeing them on the page. You know, that's exactly that's how what wins you over. It's great storytelling, brilliant storytelling. Stories, stories are what do it, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's it's mm -hmm. every there is every trope you'd see in a prison drama, but mix it in with what you'd expect to see from a kaiju thing, and you've got this most unexpected mix. And like you, you don't know what's going to happen next. First story arc is good, but it elevates immediately at the end of that story arc and into series two. So Deluxe Edition Volume 3 collects seasons five and six, and that ends the story. I don't know how it ends. I've purposely avoided any kind of spoilers because I want to sit and read this book on my lap and just have some peace. I'm going to shut the kids in a cupboard. Uh, I'm not. Please don't call me RSPCA. No, that's animals. Oh, I'm making it worse. I'm really looking forward to this book more than anything else. Apparently it was nearly printed at the end of last year, <laughs> but it was there was a massive print error, so they had to redo it. So it's it's been a big long wait for this book and it's it's coming and I can't express to you enough how worthwhile it is to own this and have it on your shelf. Kaiju Max is brilliant. It's one of my top ten comics of all time. Nice. Mic drop. That's cool. It's always Boom. I what better way to end it? And with the mic drop, I happen to find the life life house now. It's Image Comics, not Dark Horse. It's Image, December nineteenth. Yeah, Image.
Nice, nice, nice find. Yeah, David Hine and James oh, Harvey are really? the are, are authors and artists adapting the book. There you go. Needed to give them the proper shout out. <laughs> Awesome, awesome, awesome. That's fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Sigil, actually. That's probably the one that was completely not on my radar, but I'd probably have the most fun reading. I'd be curious to yeah. see what you make of it, because I'm, I'm really curious about it. There, there was so much hype around. Well, not hype, but yeah. that kind of, you know, the way that I don't buy hype. It was hype that made you curious, because people are kind of like, this is good stuff, man. Not like, this is great. You that's need to the, read it. Yeah, that's it the was best that, hype. Like, this is good. So yeah, it was. I'm really intrigued, but it's gonna have to hold off. And I'm if you know, you know, type of hype. Yeah, kind of. It will be. Yeah, I hope so. I think so. I think you'll be able to find it discounted, hopefully. And if it sells out, then they'll know there's a market. Hopefully, it will. Right, it will reprint it. So yeah, hopefully, yeah. Fantastic, our friend Dave. We did it again. Another incoming. This is. It's already December. Oh, man. We've done. A whole year's worth already. Well, it's our anniversary. That, in... <laughs> it, yeah, I think it's, it's our like anniversary. Five weeks time. We've done a year. Yeah, of Omniverse yeah, Comics this, Guide. So. Yeah, that's right. We got through it. Yeah, first year. Uh huh. And we're gonna. I'm looking forward to our end of the year list. That's gonna be fun. Yeah. Oh, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued, and I, I really want to know what you've picked. There's been some stuff I'm gonna admit up front where I've gone. You're probably going to pick that, so I'm not even going to read it, and then you can surprise me <laughs> as to whether or not you thought it was any good. And if it's not on the list, some I'm going to some stuff are going to be. Read it now. Yeah, some of some of it's going to be obvious because kind of like the way you feel for Kaiju Max. There's certain books that I've uh, whapped, wax rhapsodic about, as they say, yeah, for a long time. So, yeah, I got a couple picks, but yeah, December is going to be fun. The month. big question is, anywho. We'll do a power bomb, make it into that elusive top ten <laughs> list for Mr. Eric Antonio. The best. You have to wait and see. That's what Daniel Warren Johnson wants to know. You have to wait and see. Daniel Warren Johnson, tune in. Yeah. Find out. Tune Answer in, my emails. I want you back on the show. <laughs> <laughs> BC Scrubs ass power bomb. Do a power bomb, BC Scrubs. Look it up. The, the see it is a hidden gem <laughs> <laughs> prove my point oh <laughs> anyways everybody thank you for tuning in whether you were on twitch with us you youtube or your podcast platform of preference thank you so much rate and subscribe to the show and don't forget to check us out at omniverse comics dot guide we've got book club episodes there collector's item specials creators you name it reading orders this guy's a maniac he put together a <laughs> batman reading order like a, a in-depth batman reading order and i'm working on this incredible you're nuts my what so if you <laughs> if you want the best reading orders to follow for comic book reading to be a completionist omniverse comics guide mic drop thank you everybody